Lord cleanse us through the washing of the water of the Word of God. Aren't you glad? Doesn't it feel good to be clean? Do you remember what it was like when you were lost? You stumbled in darkness. To him who sat in darkness, great light has sprung up. Do you remember when the word of truth became alive in your heart? When you were washed in the blood and you're clean. We're clean through the word which is spoken unto us. Thank God. Thank God. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the word. Doug had it right this morning when he got up at 4 o'clock. Satan wants your mind. Because if you don't think right, you won't believe right. If you don't believe right, you won't speak right. If you don't speak right, you'll not have the ability to birth the mysteries of God and the truth of God in your home, in your life. But He has allowed us to have our minds renewed with the Word of God. Paul wrote in Philippians that you be like-minded, like-minded, having the same love, the agape love of God. Being in one accord and having the same mind, the mind of Christ. Thank God for the mind of Christ. For you're seated, find two or three people and bless them and tell them, do you know you have the mind of Christ? you everyone and welcome uh, in the anointing of God sweet there's nothing like it I was telling my granddaughter Liberty Bell as prophet Ron Khan called her I'd rather have the anointing than the mind of an Albert Einstein the anointing's greater Apart from me, Jesus said, you can't do anything. Aren't you glad for the anointing? Hallelujah. Glory to God. I thought Billy Joe had a word. <laughs> That's all right. God bless you. Well, if you haven't guessed it, the title of our message today is Having the Mind of Christ. Being like-minded, one mind, one love, one accord, having the mind of Christ, thinking like God. Praise Jesus. How many of you got your Bibles with you this morning? Let me see. Now, if you, got your, if you use your iPhone, I do a lot. You can hold it up to you. Remember uh, the old... John Osteen, I'm talking about Pentecostal John. This is a Pentecostal church, isn't it? Oh, you're in the right place. Because you don't want to be, when the, when the glory comes down, you don't want to be nowhere where it ain't allowed. You want to be in a church where the glory is encouraged and invited and allowed. 
the problem with places that don't allow the anointing and got the Holy Spirit in the back room is uh, that uh, it, it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. The yoke is destroyed because of the anointing. So some of you uh, older ones here, here, you remember Pentecostal John Osteen's confession, remember? So if you got him, hold up your Bible and say this. This is my Bible. It is the Word of God. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. My ear is attentive. My heart is open. I will receive the Word of God. It is the incorruptible seed. God breathed the Word of the living God. I will receive the truth and I will never be the same from this day. I'll never be the same. No, never, never, never in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Well, since you have your Bibles open to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, Astounding. Having the mind of God. Would you stand with me, please? For what man knoweth the thoughts of a man, save the spirit of a man which is in him, even so the things or the thoughts of God knoweth no man but the Holy Spirit of God. Nobody knows what God's thinking but the Holy Ghost. Where's the Holy Ghost right now? Yeah, hallelujah. Verse 12, now we have, not, now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Holy Spirit, which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Look at verse 16. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he might instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Say it out loud. We have the mind of Christ. You can be seated. We've not been given this so we can instruct God. How many of you know that God has no IQ? Because your IQ is your intelligence quotient or the measurement of your knowledge. Since God has all knowledge, I said all knowledge, he knows the end from the beginning. There's nothing you can know that can upstage him. So if you're not given this mind so you can instruct him because there's, if you told him anything, uh, he already knows. But you have been given the mind of Christ so you might know those things that are freely given to us of God. What would this world look like? What would this church look like if we all had the same mind? We all spoke the same thing. If we were all of one purpose and one accord, what is it going to look like? But I'll tell you, the Lord's coming for a glorious church that's holy, that has no spot, no blemish, no wrinkle, or any such thing. They will step and walk in unison. They will speak the same thing. There will be such power from agreement how I many of you know that the strongest force in the universe, in heaven and earth, is the power of agreement? What would the church look like if we get so full of the word of God that we were in total and full agreement, listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit and walking in unity with the desire of God's heart? Can you imagine Genesis 11 says, God said, I'm going to have to go down and stir up uh, all of those Babylonians because they're of one mind and one purpose and nothing shall be restrained unto them that they have imagined to do. What will it look like when our imagination 
Margaret's going to preach it. She's been preaching this to me. She's so fired up about preaching the women's thing next month. She thought she was going to do it this month, and, and they said, well, Holly Shaw's coming. And she was kind of disappointed. And I looked out the window, and she was putting Holly Tone on the shrubs outside. I said, well, it's Holly Tone time, but your time's coming. So you don't want to miss that. So she's been preaching this to me, so this is kind of an offshoot of the word the Lord's given to her. Being of one purpose, having a like desire, our only desire is to please God. Our only desire, the same desire of the Holy Spirit to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ in this earth to see transformation come to our individual lives, to our corporate lives, and to our country. Romans chapter 8 says, Likewise, the Spirit helpeth us in our infirmities. For we know not what to pray for as we ought. That means we don't know what we ought to pray for. How many of you know you don't know what you ought to pray for? If the Lord lets you win the uh, $82 million lotto, uh, that might be, not be exactly what he wants for you. We don't know what we ought to pray for. So pray in the Holy Ghost. He might want you to win the $86 million lot, but remember 10% of it belongs here. We don't know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself, what? Maketh intercessions for us with groanings. One translation says, with groanings which cannot be uttered in articulate speech. Verse 27 in the Amplified, I think we got. And he who searches the hearts of men, know what is the mind of the Holy Ghost, what his intent is, because the Spirit intercedes and pleads before God on behalf of the saints, according to and in harmony with the will of God. It's coming, y'all. Get ready. I know how many of y'all heard uh, Rick Joyner. Did you see him on Sid Roth? I tell you, brothers and sisters, God, it's coming. Get ready. Get positioned for a move of God. That's why Philippians says, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Let this mind, let means allow this mind. Start thinking like God thinks. Start talking like God talks. Start desiring what he desires. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Who though he was in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. But took upon himself the form of of a servant. That's what that resource center is all about. It's about serving. It's about being a servant. Made himself with no reputation. Took upon himself the form of a servant. And being made in the fashion of a man, humbled himself as a man. Let that mind be in you. Make yourself of no reputation. Serve. Humble yourself. And became obedient. God woke me up for you last night, Doug. And he gave me a word for my girl and he gave me a word for you. So if I have to take a nap today, it's your fault. <laughs> Although I got a wedding to do this evening and uh, they said, well, would you marry us? I said, well, are you believers? Well, yeah. Well, uh, y'all have this baby? Yeah. They wouldn't mind me saying this because I said, well, I said, well, I'll marry you. But you have to repent of the sin of fornication and... You've got to be move out and be, ask God to forgive you and you need to move him out and be separate. And when I join you in, ma in matrimony, then it'll be holy. <laughs> and because God forgave you the sin of fornication, when you come together on the marriage bed, it'll be holy. The marriage bed's honorable and not defiled. Help we get over off on that. God wants us to come back to a standard. And the word he gave me for you, Doug, and I, if I get a chance, I'm going to uh, share a little bit of this tonight. 
I looked at the clock, it was 156. John 15, 6 says, if you abide in my love, if you abide in my love, you'll keep my commandments and my love will abide in you. When you get baptized tonight, the word of the Lord to you is, I know you've been baptized once before, it's going to be different this time. To as many have been baptized, and baptized into Christ, they have put on to Christ. God's going to put something on you and he's going to put something on Mandy that you've never had. I looked over in 156. I said, God, why are you waking me up at 156? You know I'm better at 8 o'clock. Joshua 115 said, I'm giving you a land grant from Lebanon to the Euphrates. Gave you this, God's going to grant you something, but it's going to be a spiritual inheritance. And then he told Joshua, you need to incline your ear to my word and walk in my word. Let it be the meditation of your heart. Don't let it depart out of your heart. And when God's love abides in you, You'll be a different species of person, a different species of being. And God's going to release to you a God consciousness that you've never had before. You're going to be up on the roof putting on shingles, but you're going to have an awareness of the presence of God that you never had before. You're going to be like Brother Andrew who wrote the book Practicing the Presence of God. That when you're doing through your daily tasks, when you're running the kids to school, God's going to give you a new awareness if... You abide in his love. And his love will abide in you. And God's going to make you into a different species of man. And that's the word of the Lord to you. Y'all forgive me, I didn't mean to get off over on that. Hallelujah. But he became obedient, even to death of the cross. Wherefore God hath highly exalted him. Because he was obedient, because he was a servant, because he humbled himself, because he made himself a no reputation. That's the kind of church God's looking for. Wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name that's above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow of things in heaven, of things in the earth, things under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Say Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is my Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you. It just feels good every time I say that. Jesus is Lord. That means he's the boss. There are some Christians that he's Savior, but he ain't boss. Oh, that's a whole nother message. Lord, help me. Y'all pray for me. But when I read our text from 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and the Amplified, it thrills my heart. For who has known or understood the mind, the counsels, and the purposes of God, but we have the mind of Christ, the Messiah, and we do hold the thoughts, and we do hold the feelings, and we do hold the purposes of his heart. What a statement. We hold the emotions of God. When I look through the Bible, and I, I, when I read about these marvelous heroes of faith, I think I'd like to, I don't know who your favorite one is, I'd like to be like a shammah, a mighty man of David, who when the Philistines came to rob them, the people ran off year after year. And one day Shammah stood in the middle of the field of lentils and said, this is my ground. You can quit if you want to, run off. But this is my ground and I'm not leaving. If I die here, I'm dying. And he took out his sword all by himself and he defended the ground. And God wrought a mighty victory. Or I'd like to be like Eleazar. There's several Eleazars, one of David's mighty men, who resisted and slew the Philistines until the sword clave or stuck to his hand. 
I guess when they died, they had to bury him sword and all. That's the way I want to go. I want to go down with the sword, the word of God, as a two-edged sword in my mouth and in my hand. I read about, and I say this often, I would like to be like Enoch, who walked with God. Enoch had this testimony that he was not. Before God took him. One day he just got up and walked with God. Every day walked with God. My grandkids look out the window. Where's Papa? Well, he's out there walking with the birds and the squirrels and the tortoises. But I'm walking with God. And one day he was walking with God. And God said, you know what? You're closer to my house than we are yours. Just come on home. <laughs> That's the way I want to go. But above all of that, Peter, James, John, David... His mighty men, when I consider the word of God says, I want you to be like Jesus. What? I want you to be transformed into the very image of God that's in Christ in this earth. If people would ever see that, if people would ever see it, then we would begin to take upon ourselves the feelings, the emotions, the compassion of God. I don't know about you, when we were down at the distribution center, I hope how soon that becomes a, a weekly deal because you'll never get me out of there. That's hog heaven for me. Take the world and give me Jesus. We're ministering to people. And I, I could feel the presence of God in there, how God felt towards these people coming in the door. I know a lot of people said they deserve it. They won't hit a tap if they'd work, if they'd whatever. I don't, when Jesus looked on the multitudes, he was moved with compassion. And the compassion of God came upon us as these people came in the door. And one old lady, when we think about how, has, what his feelings are towards a lost world, came in in her 80s and said, is there anything we can pray with you about? I guess Kathy asked, or anything you can pray with me about? Yeah, would you pray for my elderly sister? She's dying. They don't think she's going to make it through the night. Would you pray for her? I said, well, we're going to pray for her, but let's talk about you. Are you at the place where you die? Today you know for certain you're going to heaven. She says, no, I, I really don't. I said, would you like to? Yeah. God led that 80-some-year-old lady to Jesus. Yeah, and she said, Jesus is Lord. So we quoted her the scripture, Acts 19, 11, how God wrought special miracles from the body of Paul. His body ain't here, but the body of Christ is. So we anointed a prayer cloth. You carry that up to the your 84-year-old or whatever, your sister who they say is dying. You put that on her in just a little bit. They sent us a text. Oh, guess what? Uh, Rosie sitting up in bed. <laughs> Two, yeah. And Rosie was seeing angels. The angels came to get her, but she wasn't ready to go. We said, well, you think Rosie would like us to come down and see her? So we loaded up. Last week went down to see Sister Rosie. They can barely walk. The angels are coming to get me, but I know I'm not ready. Oh, hallelujah. The passion of God, the compassion of God was in the room. We gave her the gospel. Rosie, would you like to receive the gift of eternal life? Uh, you got to repent of your sins. I, I know we think you're too old to sin, but we all got to repent of our sins. And if you do that, you can have the gift of eternal life. She says, oh, of course. Rosie got saved. Yeah. I said, now you can tell those angels to come and get you, but since you're healed, you just might as well stay around and give God glory for a while. When people come in that place, when they come in this place, they need to feel the compassion of God. They need to encounter a people uh, who are moved with tender bowels of brotherly kindness and compassion and mercy. I tell you, brothers and sisters of God, if we can ever get there, 
God can bring transformation to this city. And everything we need is there to bring it to pass. But the one thing we need to do and we need to understand, it's all about abiding. Guard your heart with all diligence. Proverbs 4 says, for out of it are the issues, the wellsprings of life. If people aren't getting healed in our midst, if there are not signs and wonders and miracles, people aren't getting healing like they were down at the uh, uh, resource center, then we need to watch our heart and make sure we're not letting all that unbelief in and all the voices of the world and the worldly entertainments guard our heart and walk in obedience. And as the Lord gave me that word for Doug, if you abide, if you obey me, if you are obedient, my love will abide in you. It's about obedience. This watered down, do anything you want to, seeker friendly message is just simply telling people, well, God knows uh, how, uh, what a mess you are and it's just all right to just go ahead and live any old way you want to and it's all right. It's not all right. Obedience is the key to the love, the agape of the Lord Jesus Christ abiding and manifesting in our heart. <clears throat> it's about abiding. If my words abide in you and you abide in me, you'll ask what you will and it'll be done unto you. It's about abiding. And God's calling us to take that Word bath, not a bird bath, word bath every day. If my words abide in you, return to the word, return to the obedience of the word, return to, return to not hearing only, but doing the word. I tell you, brothers and sisters, in God, I know this is Whistle Stop, West Virginia, but this place can be marked on heaven's map. It's a place where the love of God flows and abounds to a lost world. Behold his passions. Behold his feelings. Behold his thoughts. Behold the affections of his heart. On Monday night, prayer school, <clears throat> we've been over the Ephesians 3.17 prayer so many times. For which cause I bow the knee to the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom all the family in heaven and earth is named. God wants us to bow. He wants us to understand who he is and what he is and who we are and what we can do. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through the Holy Spirit which is given unto us and that we being rooted and grounded in love, rooted and grounded in love, rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend. That's where understanding and comprehension comes from. Because we're rooted, grounded, means that's the foundation of our life, our world, our actions and our deeds, our words and our thoughts. Rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the height, the breadth, the length, the depth, and to know the love of God that passes knowledge that can only be experienced. It begins with submitting and walking in the word of God. The word of the Lord to you, Isabella, since I got up and lay there all night praying for you and Doug and Mandy. It's not about what you know, and it's not even about what we do. It's about who we are. God wants us to be something. He's given us the word so we'll be something. And you are something, baby. Forgive me for uh, revealing my affection towards that girl. She's light to me because she's full of the light of God. You are our living epistles. Seen and read of all men. To some people, ask yourself, if you're the only Bible some people will ever read, what impression will they get? Living epistles. A lot of people won't pick this book up. 
because they've never seen the word of God manifested in any of his people. We talk like them, act like them. We need to understand we are living books or epistles. Seen and read of all men. Not written in ink. Not written on tables of stone. But on fleshly tables of a compassionate heart. Written by the Holy Spirit of God. How does Jesus feel about the prodigals? How does he feel about the lost? How does he feel about the wicked? We know the scripture tells us a certain man had two sons. And we name it the prodigal son, but the word prodigal is not in the Bible. The word prodigal means to spend or be spendthrift until you spent all. My brother-in-law said, uh, he was a a, a retired banker. He said, somebody stole my sister's, my sister, his wife's credit cards. And he said, I was going to call the authorities and turn it in, but the the thief is spending less money than she was. (laughs) But prodigal means to spend until everything's spent. Don't look at your wife like that. The story should read the prodigal God because he spent everything that heaven had. Heaven's darling crucified. For you and for me, he spent everything he had to get you. He was the firstborn of many sons and us after him that we might be sons in the likeness of his dear son. Sinners came to hear him. Publicans, prostitutes came to hear Jesus. I love it when all the tattooed people and all of them, they're going to come and say, get ready. Get ready. Because they're always attracted where love is. Religion repels them. Religion's mean. Religion's hateful. But when they find out that the streams of water are Uh, of uh, living water and mercy are flowing in this place they'll come this man said dad father give me my inheritance he went out and spent everything he had and began to be in want I heard one country preacher preach this one time he said he spent everything he had he was totally broke he sold his overcoat he finally sold his hat Sold his vest. Finally got down and sold his undershirt. And then when he came to himself, he sold on and there wasn't anything left but him. He said, I'm going back to the father's house. I'm going back to the father's house. And the father didn't scold him for all his wasteful and riotous living. He was sitting on the porch just waiting. The only time we see God run, he ran and embraced his son. The son said, I'm not worthy to be a son anymore. You ever felt like that? I've disappointed God the last time. I'm not worthy anymore. I'll just be a servant. And the father will have none of that. Go bring the best robe. Go bring a ring. Put it on his finger. Kill the fatted calf. My son that was dead is now alive. That's what God wants. The woman taken in adultery. The Pharisee said, Lord, here's this woman taken in adultery. I guess they were down at the red light district looking through the keyhole. All night waiting to find somebody in the act. Well, it doesn't take long these days. And they said, now, Master, the law of Moses says she has to be stoned up. Jesus stooped down. I like that word. That means he came down where she was because she couldn't lift herself up. And he rode in the sand. There's speculation what that is. That's another message. But He said, whosoever is without sin, let him cast the first stone. From the greatest to the least, they dropped their stones and walked off. You know the only person there that could legally have thrown a stone was Jesus. But he doesn't bring condemnation. He brings mercy. 
I don't know, when that crowd cleared, they hadn't written a song yet, but if they had that woman would be singing, I get a feeling everything's going to be all right. When Jesus was there, and he said, woman, where are your accusers? She says, no man accuses me. He said, I don't accuse you either. That's the heart of God. That's the passion of God. That is the mercy of God. Philippians in the Amplified, chapter 2, verse 9, I love this. Therefore, because he stooped so low, he stooped and rode in the sand, came down where we were because we couldn't lift ourselves up. Because he stooped so low, God has highly exalted him and given him a name. And even to the, the wayward, the woman at the well, sometimes even the, the homosexual and those in witchcraft and wicked and everything else, we need to understand and they need to uh, get the understanding from us. God still loves you and we love you. We don't condemn you, but there's a better way. And he said, give me the drink. We need to remember God's got something or we've got something he wants. And even this woman who had five husbands, anybody in here had more than five? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> Put that hand down back there. He didn't condemn her. And even the most wicked among them, this woman who'd been married five times and now shacked up with somebody else, this woman said, I know Messiah's coming. We think the wicked don't ever think about God. I know Messiah's coming. And one day when he does, he'll tell us everything. And Jesus sitting up there on the well says, you're talking to him. What a moment. I'm he. I know Messiah's coming. Even the wicked... The backslidden, they're looking. They know there's a real God, but they've not seen him in the church. They've not seen him in us. That's what this resource center is about. That's what this church is about. To minister the mercy and the compassion of God to the least deserving. Not that we were deserving at all. The least deserving. It's about abiding. It's about becoming who God called us to be. It's about being moved and holding the thoughts, the imaginations, having the mind of Christ. And God is calling this church and this people, get back to my word, get back to abiding, get back to walking with me. Clear out everything in your life that doesn't lead to God. Get rid of it, burn it, throw it away. And this will be a house of mercy, a house of healing. And I know the multitudes are coming. We read about the woman with the issue of blood, his compassion towards the sick. Spent everything she had on doctors, had nothing less left. And the scripture says she heard about Jesus. Somebody told her. Somebody told her. What did they tell her? What kind of Jesus did she hear about that caused her to get up and even though she was unclean and press through the crowd to touch the hem of his garment? What kind of Jesus did she hear about? She heard about the kind of Jesus we preach in this house. She heard about the kind of Jesus that is manifested down at the resource center. Brothers and sisters saying, God, we've just seen the beginning of what God's going to do. This is a new time, a new season, a new generation. I'm sorry how the church has missed it in the past. I can't help it. I can't help where I've been, but I can help where I'm going. God's leading us to something amazing, something powerful. What are his emotions towards a lost world? 
What are his feelings? I don't know if anybody of y'all have ever seen encounters of a God kind where Jesse Duplantis left his body and went to heaven and saw the glory. Anybody ever seen that? He walked in his study. He was getting ready. He had visits. He had counseling. He had an itinerary. And he said the presence of God was there. And the Lord was weeping. We think the emotion of the Lord's joy continuously. But the Holy Spirit can be grieved. How many of you know that? Jesus wept over Jerusalem, said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. How often I would have gathered you under my wings as a hen gathered her chicks, but you would not. You wouldn't let me. And Jesse Duplantis said, Lord, you're weeping. You're weeping. And the Lord spoke to him and said, I'm about ready to encounter the saddest day in my life when the nations are brought before me to those who covered me when I was naked, who fed me when I was hungry, who gave me to drink when I was thirsty, to those who visited me when I was sick and when I was in prison came to me, I'm going to say, enter into the joy of the Lord, but to those who rejected me, who refused to serve, I'm going to have to say to those who I created, after my own image. I'm going to have to say to those who I died and bled for, to those who I endured the cruel mocking and the scourging, the stripes, the piercings, the bruising, the bludgeoning, the crown of thorns, I've got to say to them, depart from me. I never knew you to be eternally separated from my presence. God wants us to feel like that towards this lost world. God wants us to have his same emotion. So it's not all right for us to sit there and watch them slide into perdition by the truckload day after day after day. But being moved with the compassion and the emotion of God that's in Christ. Stir ourselves up. Spend what we have to spend. Lose what we have to lose. To go into the hedges, the highways, and the byways and compel them to come to God. I'll close with this. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. You didn't think I could preach this short, did you? I got that wedding today, so I can't be late. I love this scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. God has given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. You've got it. Nobody else has it. The heathen doesn't have it. The government doesn't have it. All the programs without God don't have it. Yes, come to the platform, please. You and you alone have the ministry to reconcile men to God. In your mouth are the words of eternal life. When Cornelius fasted and sought God, God told him, Acts 15, when Peter rehearsed the event, the angel came and told Cornelius, you go find this man, Peter. When he has come, he will give you words whereby you and your house can live. You have those words. Nobody else has them. God forbid that we would set on our blessed assurance and keep that which the world is desperate for. God is calling us outside these four walls Thank God for this place. Thank God for this pastor who has a heart to take the ministry of the gospel to the street. God has given us a ministry of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors. Say, I'm an ambassador. 
Now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead. That's King James. We pray you instead of Christ. Jesus is not down here walking among the multitudes. He's not down here walking the streets. He sent you. He sent you instead of him or in his stead, in his place. We have it. God, it is as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead or instead of Christ. Be reconciled to God. Come home and be reconciled to God. Come home to God. Come home and walk with God. And since the Holy Spirit reveals to us what God's thinking, what's on His heart. I know how He feels about me. Aren't you glad? Before I picked this book up, I thought I'd always be nobody, a mindless, enraged, drunken, as Earl Hayes said when he found out Gene Campbell got saved, he said, Gene Campbell's the most miserable man I ever knew. And I was. Get on the golf course, go into a rage, broke up a whole set of golf clubs. People were scared of me and they shouldn't have been. I drive up on the first tee and they'd be getting ready to tee off. Oh, y'all need a fourth? Oh no, we were just getting ready to go home. Our supper's ready. I'm telling you. Y'all forgive me for being passionate so lost I don't care what you say about me what you do to me reject me cast my name out as nothing when I found out he loved me when I found out how he loves me and how he feels about me and even though I got very little input from my natural daddy when I found out my Father was the creator of the universe. And he loved me with an everlasting love. But I was his delight. Say what you want. Do what you want. But I'm delivered from the opinion and the affection of every man. I hope you love me. But if you don't, I'm okay. Found out he loves me and he loves you. He didn't just tell you he loved you, he demonstrated his love. And that while you were yet a sinner in due time, God demonstrated his love in that he died for the ungodly. That was you, and that was me. And how can I do anything less than give what's left? of my life that was less than nothing, less than a drop in the bucket. How can I do anything less but to serve Him and to obey Him and follow Him? Let's pray. Father, I thank You for Your Word. Your Word is so sharp. It's sharper than a two-edged sword divides asunder of joints and marrow and as a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. You know what our intentions are. You know what our thoughts are. But even when we were lost, your amazing, amazing love, as Paul put it, your great love wherewith you have loved us. Your great love. Great love. Great love. Father, let us 
take upon ourselves and let that mind be in us. The mind of a servant. The mind of the obedient. That we cannot just live to do your commands, but live to be your very representative, sons of God in the earth, so men can see. Lord, I just ask for a release of the glory of God. You said in your word that the glory that was on the face of Moses is nothing compared to the glory that we carry. Let us rise up to meet that people. And so as we worship, if you've drifted off and you've been living to serve you, you just want to come back up and say, Father, I'm coming home. If you're here, you never made Jesus the Lord of your life. He wants to transform you. He wants to recreate you into the image of His own Son. And if you just want to come up here just because I'm thankful, just because I'm thankful that I was once lost, but now I'm found, that I was once blind, but now I see, that I was lost and I'm saved, that I have eternal life. I just want to come up and say thank you. Then just come up and let the Lord minister to you as we minister to Him. Let's all stand, please.
not just that God wants you to do something. God wants you to do something. He wants you to be an ambassador, a son in the midst of a dark and a crooked generation. Be back tonight, 6 o'clock. Pastor will be back. Just coming back from a conference. He's going to be a burning ball of passion. We're going to have a baptismal tonight. Know anybody needs baptized, bring them. If you need baptized, come. Just lift your hands and receive the blessing. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly in us above all we're able to ask, imagine, or think. To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus. Word without end. Amen. Now unto him we give all honor and glory. And I say the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord will be gracious unto you. The Lord will cause the light of his countenance to be risen upon you. The Lord will give you his peace, his shalom, his peace. that passes understanding. Peace. Go in peace in Jesus' name.